whether it be National Geographic, Discovery Channel, at the movies, or down at the museum. How many of us have seen the term or heard the phrase millions of years or millions of years ago? Is it true when they're out there digging for the bones and the fossils, are they date stamped? Does the science we have really support an Earth or a universe billions of years old? I think it doesn't. I think it's a lie. It's a poor attempt to explain the theory of evolution, considering the complexity of the world we live in. See, believing life comes from nothing takes a huge amount of faith. And it almost sounds ridiculous. But if you throw in enough millions of years, it almost sounds believable. Does distant starlight prove the universe is billions of years old? The idea being that as we can observe light from stars we know to be billions of light years away, must have taken that time to come back to us as the observer. Well, there's a philosophical answer to this question as well. The Bible tells us that God is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. God is everywhere, he knows everything, and he's all powerful. With a God like this, is it possible the laws of chemistry and physics would bow down to? The God who walked on water, turned water into wine, calmed the storms with his very word? Is it possible that the laws of nature wouldn't apply? The Bible tells us in Psalm 19.1, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Is it possible God can do what he wants just to display his glory? I think so. Scientifically, there's some areas which we need to look into as well to explain this phenomena billions of light years away. There are several things we need to look at that will have a big bearing on this conversation. First, we'll talk about the speed of light. Is it a constant? You and I at school are told that the speed of light C represents a constant, 186,000 miles per second. But is it? Over the last 300 years, 164 times the speed of light has been captured. All very different, using 16 different methods. Results by astronomer Barry Setterfield shows that the speed of light has decreased so rapidly that experimental error cannot explain it. Is it possible the speed of light is showing down? This would also explain the redshift phenomena and background cosmic radiation. Secondly, the relationship between gravity and time. Time is a physical property. The universe is expanding and is finite. God knew this creation, and Einstein found it out later. Isaiah talks about this in Isaiah 42, verse 5. It says, He that created the heavens and stretched them out. In Psalm 104, verse 2, Who covers himself with light, as with a garment who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. If something can be stretched out, there must be a point in which it was condensed or compacted, in which there would be a tremendous dilation of time, causing a difference between the time at that point and at the edge of the universe. As well as mass and acceleration, altitude does affect time. The cesium-133 atomic clock is the most accurate in the world. There's one in Boulder, Colorado, which is 5,400 feet above sea level, and there's one in Greenwich, England, which is 80 feet above sea level. Every year, the clock in Boulder, Colorado gains five millionths of a second over the one in England. Both clocks are right, but altitude affects time. If you could look into outer space, you'd see things move very quickly. If you were in outer space and looking back at the Earth, things would be moving very slowly. So billions of years, or a few thousand, whose clock? EST. Earth standard time. On Earth, it's very possible a few thousand years will have passed, but the higher in altitude you go, the further out into the universe you go, the faster time goes. Billions and billions of years. Okay, evidence for a young Earth. The decay of Earth's magnetic field. Dr. Thomas Barnes, a professor of physics in USA, has done a definitive work in this area. Scientific observations since 1829 show that the Earth's magnetic field has been decaying at an exponential rate, demonstrating its half-life to be about 1400 years. 
The practical application, its strength about 20,000 years ago, would be that of magnetic star. Under those conditions, molecules necessary for life processes could not form. This demonstrates the Earth's entire history is young, within thousands of years. I want to talk briefly about one of the pillars of evolution, the so-called geologic column, in which the different levels of strata represent different ages. Well, apart from the fact fossilized trees have been found growing right the way through these different levels of strata, man-made prints and artifacts such as hammers have been found in the Cretaceous rock. So the timetable's a little bit off. The account of a global flood we see in Genesis 6 will certainly account for a lot of these sedimentary layers. The recession of the moon. Earth's gravity pulls at the moon, and the moon's gravity pulls at the Earth, as Newton's third law of motion. Pretty much as gravitational and tidal interaction between the Earth and the moon. There is a tugging that slows down the Earth on its rotational axis, and the laws of conservation of angular momentum require that it must be gained by a recession of the moon, receding further and further away from the Earth. Every year, the moon gets four centimetres away from the Earth. If we're here billions and billions of years, the moon should have gone by now. But if we do this in reverse, 1,000 years ago, the moon would have been 125 feet closer. One million years ago, the Earth would have been 28.4 miles closer to us. Ten million years ago, the Earth would have been 284 miles closer to us. 100 million years ago, the moon would have been 2,840 miles closer to us. And 1 billion years ago, the moon would have been 28,400 miles closer to us. And just at 1.4 billion years, the moon would have been in contact. Now, I'm just illustrating numbers here. That's an extreme scenario. The moon wouldn't have to come very close to the Earth at all before the gravity would rip it to shreds. Many people said, well, maybe during the billions of years the moon came later on and the passing moon was caught in the Earth's gravity. Well, there's several problems here too. Supposing it could get caught in the Earth's gravity, it would either slingshot it around and go off somewhere else, or if it did, we would see a lot more elliptical orbit rather than the circular one we see. So either way, there's a problem. The best explanation for the moon that it was created in its present orbit about six to seven thousand years ago. Finally, for now, I'm just going to talk about human population. The world's population crossed six billion mark, July 1999. In 1985, there was five billion people. In 1800s, it's agreed there was about one billion people. From that growth curve, it's very possible around 4,400 years ago, population started. The Bible teaches God made us 6,000 years ago. There was a worldwide flood about 4,400 years ago. And Noah and his family, a total of 8 people, were saved. If you start with 8 people, you can get yourself a population of 5 or 6 billion people in just a few thousand years. If you believe in evolution, and you have about 3 million years, it would mean the growth curve you'd have on this planet 150,000 people per square inch. And that's crazy. In the interest of time, I've just gone over a few things which go against the idea that the planet and universe has been here for billions and billions of years. There's many more areas of science that support a young Earth. And just some things to note, the Earth has not been proven scientifically to be billions of years old. The Bible teaches a literal six-day creation. Many scientists believe in a literal six-day creation about 6,000 years ago. And there are many more scientific evidences for a young Earth.